Hello, Oregon Trio Association. It is Matt Bizik, your executive director, here with a monthly update video for December 1st. Um, today I have some shorter items I want to get through, but also some big news items. So right out of the gate, I have exciting news in that our P3 waiver, Department of Education, this is the citizenship waiver for all programs here in Oregon, officially has signatures from both Ben Cannon here at HEC and from the U.S. Department of Education. So we can now start serving uh, non-citizens in TRIO programs. That's incredibly exciting uh, and been a long time coming. However, I do know that many of us have questions on specifically how this is happening. So our contact with the Department of Education is working to schedule a meeting with Gaby Watts, who oversees all TRIO programs within the Department of Education. I've also notified COE, so Kim Jones, uh, Angelica Villapano, and Jen Rudolph are all aware uh, and some of those folks will probably hopefully join in that meeting so we can get some very clear guidance from Gaby herself around how to implement uh, this program and some of the experiences they've seen in California to make sure that uh, compliance wise this doesn't come back and cause any issues for programs that want to start serving these students. So as of today, you can start accepting applications. You can bring students in. Uh, there were some clarifications around providing direct grant aid or student stipends. So obviously we have a lot of questions uh, with those regarding SSS programs or UB. Uh, additionally around the ages, right, that 14 to 24. So there are questions there, but if you are a program that was waiting and excited to enroll students uh, and start serving them, if you're a town search and they're within that age range, uh, they're not getting any kind of direct aid. Obviously those concerns don't apply to you, so you can start serving them right here, right now. Uh, if you want a copy of that agreement, just to be sure and make sure I'm not lying, lying to you in any way, um, I do have that. I plan on publishing all that out. I just wanted to do it with kind of the meeting information or when we're doing this webinar to kind of do these clarifying questions. So hoping to have that soon. Uh, again, just a, a time issue of waiting to schedule something, but I will keep you all informed about that meeting and next step moving forward. But we got there you can start serving non-citizens in your program today uh, if that is something you are comfortable doing. So if you have any questions at all about uh, any aspect of this, please let me know. Uh, and it's okay to wait a little bit too until we have some more clarification to start serving uh, those students. But we did it, P3 is official. Next up, I've also been getting uh, some questions around the study abroad program. So if you are a pre-college program, the offerings that we partner with CIEE on our website, you will see links that bring you to applications through their programs. Again, as a summary, OTA's funds this year are gonna to go to help support flight costs for students who are selected to receive scholarships through CIEE to go abroad. Using the link on our page gets you on a roster. Once their application process is done, we will be able to see who's been selected to receive scholarships. Uh, and then we can, out of that pool of students, identify a process for distributing our funding to help support some of the additional costs that come with flights. That's the one thing they don't pay for. They pay for tuition for the program, uh, but they don't cover flights. So that's what our money is gonna be spent for. As a caveat again, there is a $25 application fee for students uh, when they submit an application. So I hope that isn't too much of a barrier. Those funds do eventually go towards um, the program itself. So. Uh, it's not wasted if your student is one that is selected to receive a scholarship. Um, and the due date for the scholarship deadline is January 24th. So you still have time through December into January to work with those high school students and get them to apply any program in the world. We recommend you pick at least one of the language programs. That's where most of the funding goes towards for uh, the scholarship. So if your student wants to be able to go to abroad, uh, make sure they select of their three options, one language program. So. That is the parameters around high school and what you need to know now. If you're a college program and you want to learn more about this process, uh, we now have a form on our website and a page on there where students can apply for funds uh, if they are doing a study abroad program while enrolled in college. And that program can be one through a third party like CIEE. We have links on our site that kind of uh, lay out the different options offered through them. But if you are at an institution that has a study abroad program and you want to do it internally you can also pursue those what we are doing is once a student is enrolled in once they've applied been enrolled in and are going to be going abroad i know this isn't helpful in terms of upfront funding 
that encourages you to go apply. But if you have students who are looking to go abroad, uh, regardless of kind of the extra funds and have completed that process, they are enrolled, they are going to be going abroad, OTA has created a quarterly due date on a form. So it is basically a checklist. We wanna collect students' names uh, in your role as a TRIO program is that you're gonna help us just make sure that this is a student who is an active participant in your TRIO program and then ask you to do a little work just verifying that yes, they are enrolled, they will be going on an abroad trip. Complete a simple checklist, uh, the form, there's no extra questions, there's no extra steps. The student is just gonna put their information and upload that signed checklist signed by a TRIO professional. Uh, and then once per quarter, we are going to take a look at all the students who have qualified uh, and are enrolled in a study abroad program. And we are gonna distribute $1,500 scholarships with the hope being that can be close to enough to help cover the flight costs for, or just supplement some of the costs uh, that are involved with students going abroad. So once per quarter, we are going to distribute these funds. If no students apply, the funds keep rolling over and building so we can send more over time. Uh, how we are selecting is going to just be a random drawing instead of adding a bunch of extra steps and having to do a committee um, the students who are college students enrolled in an abroad program you complete this checklist and we're going to do uh, a random drawing so students who are enrolled you know nine months out they can potentially put their name in the hat multiple times with the hope that they are selected uh, but that is what our process is going to be so we didn't have to create a bunch of extra cumbersome steps uh, while still helping out some of our students with the cost of pursuing international education opportunities. If you have any questions, uh, please first just kind of review what's on the website. It's fairly straightforward. I'm trying to make this really simplistic, but essentially if you have a student who is going to be going abroad, uh, there's a, a lottery system for them to get some extra funds uh, so OTA can help support them in that endeavor. Let me know if you have any questions and I'd be happy to talk through this process a little more. As we near 2024, there are a handful of events that are going to be taking place uh, sponsored by the Oregon Trio Association. So we have our professional development event. Uh, I know we have those save the dates out there for April 1st through the 4th. Uh, we also have some student leadership conference events. There's going to be two of them, one in Salem, one in Southern Oregon University uh, down in Ashland. So registration and more details for all those are going to be rolling out on January 22nd. That is the date which I'm going to unveil kind of all the registrations uh, and give you more detailed information so that you can start signing up either as staff to attend their professional conference or uh, start reserving seats so you can have students attend these student events that we are planning. So the planning committees have been working hard. We're starting to bring some details together, but I want to just roll this all out at once instead of having five different things all happening on different timelines. So January 22nd is the date to keep in mind. That's when everything is going to roll out live uh, and I'll do an announcement at that time for all of those events. So just be on the lookout. As another reminder, COE has opened up registration for the policy seminar where we go and speak to our elected officials about appropriation asks and to continue to see TRIO funded at the federal level. Uh, federal government is absolute chaos, but it is always helpful to just be a constant reminder to our folks who support TRIO uh, to kind of continuing to at bare minimum level fund us, if not increase and make sure that we can continue to do the good work that we are doing. If you or any of your staff are going, please, please let me know. We as a state need to kind of communicate and coordinate uh, through that process to make sure that we have coverage to meet with all of our officials and kind of designate roles. And I like to do communications early so those folks who are going kind of know what to expect and know what their role looks like during those legislative days when we're on the Hill. As many of you know, we have started the unallowable cost requests for this year. So $1,000 per grant that you have. Uh, a lot of programs have taken advantage of this so far, but I just want to bring it up again because if you're a program that has not tapped into that yet, please fill out the form on our website and we can uh, start handling whatever transaction or whatever creative stuff you have in mind to help support either your students or your program. One creative use of this, you could help uh, support some staff stuff. So traditionally, we don't really have funding available out of our grants to do a holiday party, right? 
or end of year party celebration, you could use these funds for that. There's a lot of creativity, flexibility. It's essentially your money. I just help you spend it, but I'm not too judgy in terms of how you spend it. So if you have not put in a request yet for your unallowable cost funds, please do so. And I'd be more than happy to help assist you in whatever way you're looking to use that money. A quick reminder that on Wednesday, December 6th at 1 p.m., uh, myself and Jordan J are going to be hosting a webinar from o for OTA, uh, just a Zoom call, but we're going to be talking about AI, right? If you're familiar with ChatGPT and kind of its uses, right? We want to do just an overview of kind of how the AI software is changing how we do our work and provide a lot of practical tools that can help make your lives easier so that you can start implementing this new technology into your work. So it's definitely meant probably more for beginner users, uh, but we want it to be, there's gonna be some brief kind of presentation aspects to this early on, but for the most part, uh, this is gonna be kind of an open conversation as we all are kind of learning together. There isn't necessarily experts on the end user side, which is us who use the technology, uh, out there. A lot of people are doing work around this, but we want to just do it internally and talk about how we can use this in the course of our everyday work. Finally, I just wanted to make note of it now that once we get into January, there's going to be a handful of requests that Oregon Trail Association makes of all of you. The first relates to membership. So I'm going to have a form that's going to be going out uh, just collecting everybody's GAN numbers for this current academic year. And then that's how we do membership invoicing is from those GAN numbers. So be on the lookout for that when we get into January. Uh, second is that for the fact book, right? We like to collect all the statewide information and kind of aggregate all that data so we can uh, present that to our stakeholders. Most of that includes data that you're reporting through APRs, but we also like to collect some additional information related to demographics as well as stuff around FAFSA completion so that way we can report to some of our other stakeholders for foundations for the state uh, with like OSAC and HEC uh, and just kind of providing accurate data of our current students to all of those folks. So that form will also be coming out in January, but I just want to give you a heads up now as you all are kind of preparing APR data um, if you have not already submitted that. So with that, I don't have any further updates. I uh, hope you all have a good kind of end to this uh, 2024 as the school years are wrapping up and find some time to either take some time off or work on some projects as this tends to be a bit of a quieter stretch through the end of the month here. So with that, I appreciate all of you very much and hope you have a good rest of your week.